What's going on guys, this is ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is going to be a bit different from installing just a RetroPie image to an SD card because we're going to have to install Raspbian Buster and then install RetroPie inside of that operating system. This method should get a lot of people up and going until RetroPie officially releases their RetroPie image for the Raspberry Pi 4. Like I said, this is a bit different. But if you want to install RetroPie right now, this is how we can go about it. For this tutorial, you're obviously going to need a Raspberry Pi. A 1, 2, or 4 gigabyte model will work. I recommend at least a 32 gigabyte SD card. I'm going to be using a 64. And we'll also need another computer to install the Raspbian image to the SD card. I'm going to be using Windows, but this will also work on Linux or Mac. Alright, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. First up, we need to download the Raspbian image, and we're also going to need to download an application to flash that image to an SD card. We're going to be using Etcher. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the Raspbian Buster with desktop. You could get the one with recommended software, but I'm just going to be using this one. Next thing we need to download is Etcher. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. So I'm just going to download the Windows version here. And once both of these are finished, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. All right, so both of the files are finished downloading. I have Etcher, and I also have the Raspbian image. It's just going to be zipped up. Don't worry about it because Etcher is going to take care of everything for us. So first thing we're going to do is start Etcher. And you need to make sure you have the SD card you want to flash inserted into your PC. From inside of Etcher, we're going to go to Select Image, and we're going to navigate to where we have that Raspbian image. Mine's on my desktop, right here, Raspbian Buster. I'm going to double click. Now I'm going to make sure I have the correct SD card chosen. I'm using a 64 gigabyte PNY card. And we're going to click Flash. Etcher's now going to install the operating system to the SD card. This could take a little while depending on how fast the SD is, so just let it finish up. When this is done, we can shut everything down and move over to the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so our SD card is now finished flashing with Etcher. You may receive a few warnings on here, like uh, Windows can't read the drive. Just go ahead and close these down. Now it's time to move over to the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to take this SD card, place it into the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll plug in our HDMI, keyboard, and power. The first boot's going to take a little longer than normal. It has to resize the partition and get everything ready. So just let this finish up, and it'll bring us right into the Raspbian Buster desktop. So now that we have Raspbian booted up, it's going to walk us through setting this up. We'll just click Next. Choose your country, language, time zone. I'm going to use English language, and I'm going to use the U.S. keyboard. You can change the password of your Raspberry Pi. The stock password is Raspberry. I'm going to leave it here, but I recommend changing it. Remember the password you changed it to. Now we need to connect to our Wi-Fi network. If you're using Ethernet, you can skip this. I recommend doing the software update, but for this video, I'll skip it. And our setup is now complete. Do a restart. And now we're ready to install RetroPie. Like I mentioned at the beginning, one of the good things about having RetroPie installed inside of Raspbian is the ability to just plug in a USB drive and transfer our ROMs very easily. We don't have to use network transfer or anything like that. But by the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how to automatically start RetroPie when you boot your Raspberry Pi up. Alright, so let's go ahead and install RetroPie. This is actually pretty simple to do, and I'm also going to leave a text document and everything you need to know in the description. You can download the text document directly to your Raspberry Pi so you have it. And you can copy and paste each one of these lines. It'll just make it a lot easier on you. So the first thing we need to do is open up Terminal. We can do that from the very top, or from our keyboard, we can press Control alt t So the first thing we need to do is get the RetroPie setup script. We're going to do that by putting in sudo git clone depth equals 1, the GitHub for RetroPie, and we'll press enter. That just downloaded the RetroPie setup script. We need to cd into that directory. We're going to go to that directory by typing in cd RetroPie setup. Now we need to edit that script a little bit. We need to tell the RetroPie setup script that we're using a Raspberry Pi 3, even though we're using a Raspberry Pi 4. 
So we're going to nano into that RetroPie packages. From here, we need to find the version, and we're going to use our keyboard arrow keys to navigate right underneath it. And we're going to input underscore underscore platform equals rpi3. Press Control X, Y, and Enter. Now we can run the setup script sudo retropy setup.sh. This may look very familiar to a lot of people who've used RetroPie in the past. We're in the RetroPie setup script. We'll press enter for OK. And we're going to do a basic install, the very top line. You can use your arrow keys to navigate. We'll go to basic install. Make sure OK is highlighted at the bottom. Press enter. Make sure yes is highlighted. And press enter. Now this could take up to 20 minutes depending on your internet connection. So just let it finish up. All right, so now that we have RetroPie installed, it's time to exit the setup script. We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom to exit. And we can start RetroPie right now by typing in emulation station. I'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna come back to the desktop. We're gonna add a few games and then we'll get into some gameplay. The controller I'm using right now is an Xbox One controller connected over USB, but you could use a PS4 controller and connect it inside of Raspbian using the logo up in the top right hand corner for Bluetooth. I'm going to set up my gamepad, and it's going to walk us through setting up the controller. So my D-pad, up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, L, R. I'm going to press in on my left analog stick, right analog stick. And now we'll just set up both sticks. And as for the hotkey, I usually use select, but since I'm using an Xbox controller, I'm going to use my Xbox menu button. I'll press A. And now we have RetroPie installed on our Raspberry Pi 4. But we do want to add some games. So from our controller, we're going to press start. And we're going to quit emulation station. This is going to bring us back into the Raspbian desktop. Now it's time to add some games to RetroPie. I've just plugged in my USB hard drive. I'm going to take this over to the right hand side. This is my hard drive that contains my games. I'm going to open up the Raspbian file manager. And right here in Pi, we'll see RetroPie. Our ROMs are going to go here. As you can see, we have Arcade, Atari 800, NES, NGPC, Sega CD. And our BIOSes will go in the BIOS folder. So I'm going to go back to my ROMs. I'm going to find my SNES folder. And from my hard drive, I'm just going to transfer a couple SNES games. So I've just placed three SNES games in my RetroPie ROMs SNES folder. I'm going to do the same with a couple more. I'll grab a PlayStation 1 game, put it in my PSX folder. PC Engine games. And I'll do the same with Game Boy Advance. So now I have some games installed that I can play with RetroPie. I'm going to close these windows down. We'll open up Terminal and we'll just go right back in here. And then I'm going to show you how to automatically start up RetroPie when your Raspberry Pi boots. So as you can see, I got my Super Nintendo, my Game Boy Advance, PC Engine, and PlayStation games right here. If you want to scrape the artwork for each of these games, press Start on your controller. Go to Scraper, Scrape from the Games DB or Screen Scraper. I'm going to go with Screen Scraper, Scrape Now, and for this video, I'm just going to scrape one. So I'll deselect these three, and I'm just going to scrape Super Nintendo. We'll click Back and Start. And we'll go into Game Boy Advance. As you can see, I got those four games. Nothing has scraped yet. But I did scrape my Super Nintendo. So I have box art for all three of these games. You can start playing from here. We'll get into Joe and Mac 2.
and we're now playing SNES in RetroPie on our Raspberry Pi 4. And yes, sound is working, I just have it turned off in my game capture. So in order to exit, we're going to press our hotkey and start. So I'll press the hotkey that I set up and start. It'll bring us right back into emulation station. So now it's time to set this up so it automatically boots into RetroPie when we start up our Raspberry Pi. We're going to exit. And like I said, there is a text document in the description. We're going to open up a terminal. Control Alt T. We're going to nano into the LX session or LXDE Pi session. And from here, we're going to use our arrow keys all the way down to the bottom underneath point R pi, and we're going to add LX terminal minus E user bin emulation station. Control X, press Y, enter. And now every time we start up our Raspberry Pi, it's going to boot directly into RetroPi. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the Raspberry Pi. You can type in sudo reboot, or we can go up to the little Raspberry Pi logo and restart from here. And there you have it. You now have RetroPie installed on your Raspberry Pi 4. This is a bit different. We're still waiting on an official image from the RetroPie guys, and that should be coming soon. But for now, you can use this method without any issues. I really appreciate you guys watching. Like I mentioned, I have all links in the description. I'll also have a text file and the text listed in the description below. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.